Hello and welcome to this segment of Credit Matters TV. I'm John Paikuch in communications on behalf of the Latin American Sovereign Team. I'm joined by Lisa Schneller, the economist for Latin America. We're here to discuss the most recent report on the economic outlook titled Latin America Growing More Slowly But Still Growing. Thank you for joining us, Lisa. Thanks, John. A pleasure to be here. So to begin with, what is the economic forecast for growth in Latin America for through the end of 2012, but also next year? And how do those compare with last year, in other words, 2011? Sure. We see growth this year for the region on, in, ending up a little under three, about two and three quarters um, percent growth, picking up to about three and a half percent growth next year. That compares, you know, it's down from over four last year. And it's also both this year and next are lower than the recent 10-year average of 3.7 percent for the region. Um, this year, really, the slowdown that we see is very much driven by Brazil, um, who we see shifting now in a recovery, but overall uh, growth is a low one point, expect to be a low 1.5 percent this year. Mexico, on the other hand, has been quite resilient. We expect it to grow around 3.8. Um, the smaller countries in the region have also been fairly resilient as well, but certainly there's been a slowing down in their growth rates. Mm -hmm. And then, so, so looking at the region in the context of, of decelerating growth globally, how determinant is, is, is demand from outside the region in terms of growth within Latin America? In other words, demand from outside the region versus demand from domestically within countries or among countries within the region? Sure. Clearly, the global context has played an important role for the overall downshift in growth this year. Um, and that's really, except for Mexico, if you, you've seen resilience there, we have growth holding on about 3.8, and that's despite kind of, you know, sluggish U.S., um, but you've, you've seen a resiliency there in the manufactured exports to the U.S., um, really holding up, and that filtering in through some firming in domestic demand in Mexico, that remains the case as the labor market continues to modestly eke away at the higher unemployment rates that are still in play from the crisis of, uh, and the recession in, in 2008, 2009, but credit growth has picked up. So there, they have held on um, in this environment. If you look elsewhere, though, exports, for example, Brazil down 4% this year, Chile down 6%, Peru down 3%. That's in the first seven to eight months of the year. That compared with, you know, strong positive growth rates, 20% and above last year. Positive growth in Colombia in terms of exports this year but way down from over 40 percent, eight-ish percent, from over 40 percent last year. Sequential decline in either outright declines in exports or declining rates of growth. Um, same picture for industrial production in key countries, with the exception of Mexico, where, where it's held fairly steady. So the region hasn't been able to escape the global pressures, but in key countries, the domestic demand dynamics have offset that example, Peru, Colombia. So while, again, overall growth rates are going down, the, the, the domestic demand dynamics has, have held up fairly well, ex-Brazil. Mm -hmm. And then, so now going back to look at uh, growth patterns in specific countries, where do you see sort of areas of this, or countries with the strongest growth versus versus uh, the weaker end of the spectrum. Yeah, well, the, the weaker end of the spectrum starting there, clearly, for the numbers this year is Brazil, coming in at one and a half. And there, the slowdown there is a combination of the external, kind of which I've, ta which I've talked about, um, but Brazil is a fairly closed economy in terms of actual exports to GDP, but it's very much open to global sentiment. And the global sentiment, the uncertainty weighing from Europe, uh, slow down in China, certainly weighing in on sentiment in Brazil and offsetting domestic policy stimulus until really June, July, August is when we saw a turn in growth this year. Um, if you look at the monthly GDP numbers in Brazil, that's where you really saw some, some, some turning there. So we are seeing signs of recovery, but they're going to come in at the low end. Um, picking up next year, but again, modestly, because 
you know, because of a global context in, in, in essence. Um, but the high, at the high end in the region, you've got well, Panama growing over, still over 10 percent. But our view is it's going to slow down to 8-ish percent on average. You have there, you know, the canal expansion project, a lot of in infrastructure investment projects going on, um, public sector driven. Then in Chile, we see growth at about 5 percent. Um, again, investment, you know, kind of has, has held up and the de consumption domestic demand dynamic. Peru in particular as well, growing at about 6% this year. Um, and again, their consumption and investment driving domestic demand. And then what about the outlook on any other areas that we haven't touched on that haven't